Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 47. Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. Uh, this week's going to be kind of a short episode, only because I've only worked really on like one thing a lot. I don't have any finished objects. Uh, I have a couple of half finished objects, but they were just patterns that I was testing to see which one I liked more. Um, and I'm actually, I've decided not to go with this particular pattern. I'm going to go with a different one. But uh, I've been working mostly on my Mandala Madness blanket. And then I worked a little bit on one of my corner to corners, like in between. And actually, I forgot to get that. I have to go get that. Okay, I got that. Ooh, I'm sitting in a weird chair and it's like sticking to my legs. It's not leather, but it's like pleather. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um... Yeah, I don't have anything important to say, I don't think, right off the bat. So we're going to go ahead and get into the crochet stuff, and then I'll talk a little bit more later about the other stuff if you're not interested. But, yeah. So, first thing first, I'll just start with my corner. Well, I'll start with the half-finished objects. I was wanting to find a little pumpkin pattern, because, um, how, how is she? She's like my grandmother-in-law kind of <laughs> she uh makes and sells reefs and things you make reefs with like ribbons and stuff um and she sent me a picture of a sewn pumpkin that some a lady was selling on her facebook group uh that was real popular so she you know she has an idea for me to make them and uh because i've been selling bags lately <laughs> but uh i thought i would try to make crochet ones and see if people would be interested in adding those to their reefs so I was looking for a little crochet pumpkin pattern, and I found one that I wanted to try, and I did. <laughs> I made two yesterday with different size hooks. Um, I just don't like the pattern. I didn't. I can't even remember who the pattern was by because I just I tried it. I didn't like it, so I just went on looking for another pattern. But I will go ahead and show these because I am going to go ahead and make leaves for the top of it and like a stem and keep it for myself. But I just don't like the holes that it created. And I know it created the holes because it's a double crochet amigurumi. And it wasn't written in UK terms. It was, there was a video tutorial and everything. It was a United States terms. So it was just, the holes are too big. I'm not comfortable. I wouldn't be comfortable selling it to someone with so much fiber fill showing. But this is the first one I made with her pattern. See the holes? Uh, it's a cute little pumpkin. It's just, I don't like the holes. I wouldn't sell it to anybody with like that. I'm going to go ahead and finish them. And from like far off, like sitting on our table, you can't see it. So it would just be cute. Um, decoration. <laughs> this one was made with worsted weight and it's an eye hook, which I already knew when I was reading the pattern before I started it. That that's way too big for an amigurumi. But I went with it anyways and I didn't like it. And then I went down to an H hook and it still created the hooks or the holes. So I have a pumpkin and a slightly smaller pumpkin. I will finish them and keep them around the house. But I sensed, since that time, my sister came, so I, I quit making pumpkins. But um, I did find a single crochet um, version of that that I will be making. I want to make like two different sizes, like a small one and then a slightly bigger one. Um, small and slightly bigger, something like that <laughs> to offer to people. And then I was going to make a bunch of different oranges and yellows and whites, like cream color ones with different stems. Just to see if people would be interested in buying them for their reefs. Um, because then that would be a little bit of extra side money, you know, coming in. For us. But anyways, yeah, it's a nice pattern and I liked how quick it was. It's super quick. I made both of these in like 30 minutes, but I'm just not comfortable with the holes. And uh, I did try adjusting my tension and stuff and it's, I know it's just because it's double crochets. That's not normal for an amigurumi to have double crochet uh, stitches because it, you know, amigurumis are usually tight so that the stuff won't show through. But anyways, I will keep them and finish their little tops and, um, just use them at my own house, you know, stick them somewhere <laughs> during autumn. But yeah, that's the only almost finished object I have. I can't remember what's in this bag. Let me look. Oh, this is the pumpkin. This is the pumpkin stuff in this Halloween bag I made. Um, I went ahead and pulled out some more and I got the new hook in there. The new pattern that I found is a G hook, but I've not tried it yet. So we'll be doing that later today, probably. All right, so I will go ahead and uh, show my corner to corner blankets. Um, I didn't work at all on this one, but I'll show it to you anyways, just because it's right here. Um, I have put these kind of on pause while I work on my Mandala Madness. So this is exactly where it was last week. Oh goodness, it's kind of tangled up. But this is the just regular corner to corner I'm working on in Mandala um, Unicorn. There's where I was 
the week before last. I still haven't worked on it, so I actually need to move that up to here. But it's just pink and gray. <laughs> I am decreasing, so this is the size it's going to be. Just, you know, filled in. Um, and I, I do plan on finishing this soon. I just want to finish my Mandala Madness first because I'm entering it in the fair. And I want to for sure get it done. But I'm using an H hook on this and it's just corner to corner stitch. Uh, double crochets. It's not the mini. So that's that one. And the other one I did work on some. And I think I did put a progress keeper on it. I hope I did. This one is with also H hook and um, I love this yarn prints and I think it's called turquoise sky. This one I did start decreasing on also. So that's the size it's going to be. I don't think I put a progress keeper on here. No, I know I did. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Can you see it jiggling? That's how much I got done since last week. This is the one that I take in the car with me to work on. And probably once I finish this one, I will do the same thing with the unicorn one. Just because I can't work on my Mandala, Mandala Madness in the car, I will take this in the car and work on it when Devin's driving. Or if we take Jesse to the park or something, I can work on it then. Alright. Um, that one has two whole balls in it. And I'm decreasing now with the second one. The end of the second one into the third ball skein whatever and the mandala with the unicorn one it has two whole cakes in it and I'm working on decreasing it now and then I'll be starting the two other cakes all right now the big hurrah <laughs> is the mandala madness I've been working on this like crazy I've been trying to get one there's 17 parts it was a crochet along um it's a free pattern by the way by Helen Shrimpton and I'm using a G hook and I'm using Red Heart Super Saver. All the colors are Red Heart Super Saver except the white. And I'll, I'll name them in just a second. But um, I mean, there's seven, 18 parts to this. It was like an 18 week cow, I believe. Uh, one part each week. And the, the parts, the, each section is only like a few inches. You know, it varies. But I'm trying, I've been trying to get one section done a day. Uh, I didn't miss yesterday, but it's just because of Jesse and stuff. But, um, just as until it gets, I know once it gets bigger, obviously I can't because it'll take more time to do the rounds. But uh, I'm just trying to squeeze in as much time because I have until the end of August to get it finished. And I'm doing pretty good because um, I just finished section 7 last night and there's 18. So I'm really close to being halfway done. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. Oh, it's big. I'm going to I'm probably gonna have to stand up for this. It's grown a lot since last week. <laughs> this red is where I was last week. If you remember in the Facebook group, you'll be seeing updates of it. Alright, that's the hole. Let's get up here. This right here is where I was last week. This is the beginning of it. And then I added these. These are bubbles. More bubbles right there. I love all the texture on this blanket. Like, there's ridges and more bubbles. <laughs> and there's like an eyelet section and more bubbles. These cool little fans. It's just a really beautiful pattern. I cannot wait to finish it. So pretty. All the colors. Let me do the colors real fast. Cool. All right. This is I love this yarn white, uh, red heart super saver in hot red, pumpkin bright yellow, spring green, blue, and amethyst. So far. I've used now all of my um, skeins were already open but the white the white was brand new and I still got a lot of it left but I'm almost out of my first ball of red yellow and orange I've still got a lot of green and blue and my amethyst was one of those jumbo skeins so there's still a lot of that but I am trying to track about how much yarn just so I can put it in my uh, Ravelry project notes just in case someone else wants to make it because if you look on Ravelry um, the majority of people who made this blanket made it in yarn that's smaller than worsted weight there are some worsted weight ones but there's not a lot so that's why I was wanting to try to keep track so that if someone else is like me who prefers working with worsted weight they can this thing's already pretty hefty <laughs> um, so once it gets completely done it's going to be a heavy blanket but that's alright I mean the whole point of a blanket is to keep people warm now I do plan on 
entering it in the fair and we have to enter it in the fair unwashed so I will I've been trying to weave in my ends to every few sections so I've only got a few hanging around because <laughs> I didn't want to leave it and have a quadrillion but I'm gonna weave in the ends and enter it in the fair and then uh, after the fair is over I'll probably wash it and uh, so that it gets softer and I'll probably put it on my love seat <laughs> I know that's dangerous with a toddler but I kind of wanted to hang it up but I don't know how to hang it up to where it won't get dirty because I know there's no way I'm gonna be able to afford a um, frame for it because uh, custom frames are very expensive um, maybe I can make one with just wood and instead of glass like a plastic panel I don't know I'm gonna worry about it when it, when it gets done but I would love to just kind of showcase this uh, I did say that if I did put it on my love seat, then the kids, which would be Jesse and the girl I babysit, will be banned from the love seat and they're allowed to get on it because I don't want to spend so much time and effort on this blanket just for it to get stained. But, um, I mean, it is a blanket. I want it to get used. So, I mean, worst case scenario gets stained, then it's just got, you know, proof of use, proof of love. And I can always make another one because it's actually a really simple pattern. Uh, I was a little worried coming into it that it would be hard, but every row is a different pattern if you keep seeing me look up it's because i keep getting notifications on my phone and my hair's frizzy it is super hot today it was like 103 yesterday here that's so hot <laughs> for us in july june it's not july yet usually our hardest, hottest month is august but um anyways each uh row is different different stitches i really love the use of, of bubbles because i love bubble stitches <laughs> they just make me happy but um the worst thing, I think, is just the time-consuming of the triple crochets. There are a ton of triple crochets in this blanket. Let me turn it around. See, like, there's a bunch right there, and there was a bunch down here. That's, like, the worst part. It's just it takes so long to make a whole bunch. Like, right here, there's, like, 20. And it takes a while. But it's just fun. I will, like, watch I'll be sitting in there watching Jesse play or watching ER on my laptop or something. And I will just work and do it. And, um... Most, almost every row is a new color, but some of them have a, see, it's hard to explain. She has it on her pattern. She used different colors um, and different weight yarn, but she has it on there listed which color she used where. And what I'm doing is I did pick my own colors out, but I kept with her pattern. So like if hers was like a purple color, these three rows, I kept it yellow once it was after the orange and all yellows next because I'm using the rainbow colors. I just went ahead and did the three rows of yellow instead of, you know, purple, changing it, you know, yellow, green, blue. <laughs> just because I wanted it to, you know, like these sections, it looks good all in one color. And that's also why back here, there's purple, white, then purple. And it's because um, I knew that this second row after the white would, was going to be connected like this to like a circle. So I went ahead and did one row of purple and then I did the white. Actually, there's two rows here of the white and then the purple again just so it would look like a background with a circle on it if that makes sense but yeah you can really use any colors and any um what am i saying any colors and any pattern that you want just i just like the rainbow colors and i had a bunch of it so i thought it would be pretty and i added the white just kind of to break the uh the darkness of the red and purple and kind of represents clouds i guess i love rainbows <laughs> But yeah, uh, that's my Mandela Madness. I feel like I talked about that forever. It's a pretty big size right now. And I love it. I love working on it. I love watching it grow and I cannot wait to finish it. <laughs> but yeah, it's still living in a diaper box because I have so much yarn for it. Let me show you the yarn. The floppiness of it all. Like this is a jumbo amethyst. And this was full when I started so this is like a about a normal skein and let's see here this is my red this one was full also so that's how much of it that I've used so far the orange I had used some out of it's real floppy I need to roll it into a ball but um and the yellow is almost all gone but I had used some of the yellow and some of the orange in previous projects here's the yellow <laughs> And the green and blue are about the same as the red. They were most, most of them were mostly full. Jesse's hollering for me here. He's out there with Devin. He's watching so I can film. He's at the door. All right, he left. <laughs> I don't want him to start crying over me. But yeah, that's all my projects so far. Um, there was something I was starting. Oh yeah, monster. Oh, darn, I didn't bring it in here. 
I posted on the Facebook group if you remember Heidi Yates which is the owner of Snappy Tots released three patterns for little monsters that are free and uh, if you're interested in that you can go to the Facebook group and find the post and it takes you to her website and they're cute little monsters they're just little and uh, she made them with the idea of spreading happiness um, <laughs> uh, she, you know, like you can take pictures of them just doing stuff around your house, cute, and, or you can actually, she has these little things you can print out and attach to them that you can leave like at parks or somewhere so that kids can find them and find a little toy, you know, and I thought that was a neat idea. Um, recently, it was like a year or two ago when Pokemon Go first came out with huge, uh, a woman, her name was Nicole, but I can't remember her last name, um, she started making little Pokemon amigurumis and leaving them out and then everybody started doing that. It was really neat. It's kind of the same concept, which is just, you know, leaving something for someone to find so it just brightens their day up a little bit. And I just thought that was a cute idea. I did start making one of those, but I got frustrated because the kids, I had both kids that day, <laughs> and they were playing and stuff, and I mess, I kept messing it up. My stitch count kept being off, so I just ripped it back to where I messed up and put it in its bag. And I completely forgot about it until just now, but it's in there. And uh, I was making, I think it's, Monsoor Oliver the pattern is the, the I don't know it's one of the little monsters <laughs> um, I was making him with a scrap ball of I love this yarn something I can't remember the number colorway but it's the same yarn that I actually made excuse me I burp all the time I'm feeling it's the same yarn that I made my other little monster with for Jesse a little amigurumi um, months ago I'm just trying to use up some of my uh, random scraps and Kat the girl babysit she's actually she's getting way better at crocheting hi Kat <laughs> I know she's probably watching because she always watches but um she's getting so good at crocheting she's learned so much and I've been telling her to watch more YouTube videos you know and to pause it and rewind it when you need to you know check to make sure you're doing it right and she's getting so good at it she made a scarf the other day while she was here and she's been using a lot of my scrap balls which is good because it gets them used up uh which I'm fine with because I mean I like using them for stuff like this but sometimes they're just sitting there forever not being used but yeah that is all of my crochet stuff yeah uh, the only other things I have to talk about is uh, one oh, I just got a email it's not important though one um, I got monetized for YouTube which is all thanks to you guys it's all thanks to the viewers for watching and liking and subscribing and all that stuff um, I know that I'm not going to be like rolling in the dough for this, but any amount that I do earn off of YouTube, um, AdSense or whatever, I will be putting back into the channel. I've got it set up to where whenever it gets to the threshold, it'll go over to my PayPal. So that, uh, because that's where I keep all the money for my YouTube and giveaways on Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Facebook group, <laughs> which is almost one of those coming up soon. But, um, so I'm hoping that, uh, I can accumulate a little bit of money just to help with with the YouTube stuff, but uh, I've also made a little bit more off of Knit Crate, which is also in there. And um, speaking of Facebook giveaways, we were at, last time I looked, which was just a while ago, we were at 370, I think, one members. So once we hit 400 members on the Facebook group, I will be doing another pattern giveaway for Ravelry. So if you're not a member of the Facebook group, the link will be below, and you can join it and possibly be one of the winners um, for the pattern. Which, and every time I give away a pattern, it is for any pattern on Ravelry, uh, five U.S. dollars or under. Uh, and then whoever wins the, I usually put a post up and do like a random draw. Uh, whoever wins it, they can just contact me with the pattern that they want and I'll send it to them as a gift. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, the only other updates I got is I did update my Etsy shop. Uh, I updated it, I think twice this last week. Some of the stuff that I updated it with is already sold but uh, if you're interested I'm still everything in the shop is still 15% off until the 5th of July so you still got about a week to uh, get 15% off I still have I think seven bags and seven sets of stitch markers or something like that um, I got quite a few stitch markers on there if you're interested and uh, I fixed the shipping till now if you order more than one item uh, the shipping isn't as expensive uh, I for completely forgot about that before and the shipping was still full price for every item and I hate that because uh, it doesn't cost that much to ship but um, now it's fixed so like if I think if you order a stitch marker you pay full shipping and then everyone after that 
is like 50 cents extra and with bags you pay full shipping for the first one and then a dollar extra because it's you know you ship by weight so I don't want to like rip people off in shipping <laughs> so that has been fixed and yeah I think that's about it <laughs> that'll be linked below so if you're interested the only other thing I have to talk to mention is my nick crate um if you use my coupon code which will pop up right after I get done talking and I might pop it up there somewhere um no kitchen name 20 you can get 20% off your first knit crate order and if you go through the link that I'll link below um, I do get a small kickback from that if you buy anything through there someone spent $14 on there the other day and I got 30 cents <laughs> so it's not like I'm making tons of money off of it but like I said that goes into my PayPal and it goes to buying patterns for giveaways and shipping for giveaways and stuff like that anything that has to do with uh, my brand name here on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook but yeah I think that's about everything I needed to throw out there I'm gonna hop off here it is Saturday the 30th of June tomorrow's July that's crazy but I'm gonna hop off here because I got a, a bunch more videos I gotta film I'm gonna be filming two Ravelry tutorials I actually had one filmed and ready to edit but I accidentally deleted the audio part of it because it was the I have I still have the screen capture screen capture but I deleted the audio so I have to refund the whole thing. And it is how to put pictures on your project page and how to use pictures and Facebook, or not Facebook, Ravelry groups, like how to post them and stuff like that. Uh, and then I want to I wanna eventually <laughs> film another crochet and chat or a frog and chat because I have all those projects that was gifted to me to frog. And um, I have, oh, uh, you know, I can crochet and chat anytime. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here, get this edited, edited and uploaded <laughs> so that uh, you guys can see it. And then hopefully I can get some more filmed and done later today. Oh, um, this might get out in time for some of you to see it. Don't forget to go back a few videos to my June Knit Crate giveaway and enter it because it is ending tonight, June 30th. And I will draw a winner sometime tonight or probably in the morning. And I will announce the winner on Sunday, July 1st. Um... And that person will have a week to contact me. Usually they contact like within an hour because they're excited. You know, it's like me. How, why would you wait? <laughs> Unless you just didn't see it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.